Hello everyone, we're going to go ahead and begin. My name is Glenn Engelberg and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment for the MS in Global Energy Management or GEM program and thank you so much for joining us here today. We're very excited to have you join us for this webcast and really the purpose of this webinar is that we want to have your most pressing questions about graduate school answered. Essentially, what do you really want to know about the student experience when going back to school? So you can see if it's the right fit for you. And to go ahead and make sure that this is the case, we will have a couple poll questions throughout the webinar to gauge the topics you want to hear about and understand a little more about the most important concepts here and make sure it's as helpful as possible. Um, plus, as you know, we have Ellen Scott and Parker Cohen, two GEM alumni that will go ahead and share their perspective on the program and answer a lot of these most commonly asked questions too. One last note before we begin, uh, for all live attendees here today, we are going to, we are giving away the chance for you to win your first two semesters of GEM books uh, provided for free. It's uh, actually worth up to about four to $500. So we'll go over how to enter for your chance to win at the end of the webinar. So definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, we're gonna um, have a great webcast here. So a quick agenda. Um, since everyone's knowledge of the GEM program is a little different and varies, we're going to start off with some quick details of an overview of the program, really just a snapshot of what's it all about. And then we'll go over the most frequently asked questions about the student experience that Ellen and Parker will go, will go, will go ahead and share. Lastly, we'll have a little bit of an overview on the application process, um, go over the, uh, the, text, uh, the textbook um, giveaway slash uh, the textbook giveaway here. and um, really, uh, a couple poll questions that we have too as well to make sure everyone is engaged and understands what's going on. All right, so the first thing I would like to quickly go over here um, with the overview is that we focus on all energy fields to really prepare you to work in any, any energy sector. I know Parker will touch on this in a little bit too because he's had experience with a few different energy sectors, but we want to make sure that all students here gain the appro appropriate business and leadership skills um, with the regulatory space, finance, um, technical space, executive leadership, really all of the business and leadership components that you want to that you want to understand about. Um, plus, it is a the program itself is one that's designed for full time working professionals, and we'll go over the hybrid online format here in a little bit as well. Okay. Now, for a few facts about the program here, we actually started our, our first class in 2009. It's hard to believe, but we actually have our 22nd cohort starting here in January, and we are still working with students for that class, and we'll go over some of those details uh, here soon. Um, also, a couple other uh, quick nuggets that uh, might be helpful. One is that we actually have over uh, 375 alumni and uh, many students, too, from all different countries, uh, you know, states, you know, across the country, and the majority of them, a little over 50%, actually report an increase in salary upon graduation as well. But you really get a lot of great experiences from those that are in different energy sectors and different places that you really never would have uh, probably been exposed to. And it's just a great perspective to be helpful for you as well. Now, everything kind of kicks off here with the cohort weekend. And I have setting the foundation for success there for a reason. The reason is that it really helps build relationships with their cohorts on those four day weekends, which are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And it really sets the foundation for the next nine weeks that you have online. There's a lot of value of learning with your peers in person out there from all different energy sectors and all across the country too, but also from your instructors as well. Um, and we'll go over them in a little more detail too, but they really set the course of what the next nine weeks of the program will be like, go over all the important expectations, the harder concepts to really make sure you have strong footing from the get-go all the way until the end. And plus, as you can see, we do a couple of fun events, um, some site tours, and really just a lot of camaraderie that's built as well uh, in the program with your peers. Um, in addition to that, we also have something called the Executive in Residence Program because a lot of our students are looking to take that next step in their leadership journey. So we have an executive, and you can see a couple of the ones right here, including our uh, current one, Kathleen Stacks, who are very excited that will join us on board. Uh, but what I want you to take away from this is that this is your opportunity to expand your executive network and really you can have the chance to sign up for some one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions with them, um, some small group lunches, and really just add some executive presence to your network too. And even sometimes, you know, has helped out with different career opportunities as well. 
Now, for our faculty here, uh, a couple quick things to point out. One is that they average over 20 years of energy experience and are come from all different sectors too. But one of, the, one of the things that's really unique as well is that they contribute to the same energy space that you do. So they understand what you're going through, um, care about the career and growth you have, the passion about the industry, and they're active members in it as well. So they add a lot of value from their current experience and understand the most important issues and trends and business acumen that you need to know that provides our students with the most valuable insight on the really the practical application, not just what you're learning, but how does this actually apply to the things that matter or what companies are looking for too. And that's a really valuable for our students' careers and something we've always focused on as well. Now, after those cohort weekends, you have the next nine weeks online. Uh, for those of you that have or haven't done online before, I can definitely tell you that having people you can connect with in person at the beginning makes it a lot more helpful to collaborate, um, go over discussions, and really set a foundation with everything. Plus, it's very flexible. I know Parker and Ellen will talk about it too, but it's deadline driven. So you can continue to work full time while doing our program part time, and this is what allows for that to happen and still make sure it's collaborative, instructor driven, and our instructors hold office hours and are very available too. Now, probably the number one reason why students do our program is that they're looking to go ahead and advance their career. So, uh, so actually, we did a, a quick survey here. Uh, for our students, and actually 55% of them have been promoted within six months of graduating, and a third of them received a, a salary increase of 10% or higher as well. Right here are just a few small examples of some of our alumni, but I think you can see that there's a pattern that they are going to more, you know, leadership positions. Some like Kim start their own company, um, you know, or like um, Marissa, more like the data analytics side of oil and gas, but what everyone um, uses this program primarily to do is to go ahead and help advance their career and even some actually switch from oil and gas to utilities or renewables to you know, the utility sector and so on and so forth. So it really gives you that broad skill set to make sure that you're really energy resilient, um, no matter what downturns and things may happen, that you have the skill set to go ahead and continue to succeed in your career. Now, as I promised, we do have um, a couple poll questions here. So the first one uh, to get a gauge from the audience that I'd like to have here as well is that, um, what you're hoping to learn from the webinar today. So if you don't mind, it's taking about 30 seconds to fill this out, and then we will go ahead and have Parker and Ellen um, start the discussion here with the program. So we'll hang tight here for a few seconds and then begin that. All right, well, well thank you for Going ahead and filling that out, and um, and actually, it looks like here too that the return on investment piece, as well as how Gem is different than a MBA, were a couple of the bigger of the bigger components that we've had, um, along with you know what energy sectors, what different ones can help you with too. So those are all definitely topics that we'll talk about today, and hopefully can help Parker and Ellen discuss uh, that as well. Now, um, speaking of Parker and Ellen, uh, that we have here, we want to go ahead and introduce yeah the two alumni that will be uh, that will be presenting here with us today and um, as you can see uh, they are both graduates of the gem program and why don't we go ahead and hear from them um, because I'm sure you're maybe a little little sick of hearing from me <laughs> at the moment so um, we'll go ahead and have um, Ellen and Parker briefly introduce themselves um, and then we will go right into the questions here um, one other note if you do have any questions during the presentation today we will have uh, we will have a few minutes towards the end where you can do a little bit of a Q&A session and we'll go ahead and try to get to as many questions there as well. All right, so uh, without further ado, um, well, ladies first, so why don't we go ahead and have uh, Ellen uh, briefly uh, introduce yourself, just um, your name, where you work, maybe like a 20, 30 second quick bio. Yeah, so Ellen Scott, um, as you can see up there, and I want to first just start by apologizing if there is any background noise here because I'm currently in the lobby of a, an office building in Houston because a lot of what I do for work now is traveling to conferences, traveling to lunch and learns, client presentations. I have really become a storyteller, a technical storyteller for 
the oil and gas industry. I have a petroleum engineering background, a highly technical background, but I've started becoming more on the kind of client facing and again, storytelling side of things where I'm doing a lot of presentations and technical papers and working with PowerPoint and Word a whole lot more than I am with Excel and simulators these days. So I think, I think the GEM program was certainly helpful in, um, in getting me to hone in on some of these more soft skills and uh, outward facing skills. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Alan. And thank you again for joining us here today. And well, Parker, why don't you give a quick introduction of yourself and we'll then go ahead into the first question here. Thank you very much, Glenn. Um, kind of a reverse story uh, rather than Ellen's where uh, I come from a utility background, primarily in uh, program management and kind of a business administration side of things. Uh, however, now I'm working more on a deep analytics side and work more in uh, Microsoft Excel and simulators than I do in uh, Word and PowerPoint. Um, but yeah, I come from, uh, we originally started at Excel Energy before joining the GEM program. Uh, worked a lot with uh, utility demand side management, energy efficiency and sustainability. And now I'm more focused on appraisals, valuations, and analysis of power markets and power, mar or power uh, generation units as well. All right, well, great. Well, thank you so much. And as you can see, yeah, there's already a diverse array yeah, of energy fields and sectors. I know that you worked in too, Parker. So, all right, well, why don't we go ahead and we'll get to the first question here. Parker, since yeah, we have you right here, um, we'll go with you first, but then we'll have Alan follow up on the same question as well. Uh, Parker, can you tell us why you decided to pursue the GEM program versus an MBA or some other similar options that you were looking at? Sure. Um, I mean, while you know the MBA is very well-rounded uh, education and everything like that, uh, I knew I wanted to work in energy. I wanted that specific kind of core curriculum offered by the GEM program. If any of you prospective students have looked at it yet, you'll notice there are a lot of similarities with the standard MBA program. However, there's some others that kind of stick out. I primarily, in my from my experience, I thought technical aspects of energy science was was also one of my favorite classes. Um, but also it just kind of stuck out to me wanting to get more into the technical side of energy rather than just on the business administrative side. So it gave gives kind of a, a great opportunity for, you know, non-engineering side uh, of the spectrum folks to kind of get a taste of that side of the industry, while also understanding how, you know, different generators work, how different forms of technology, whether you're talking about, you know, nuclear power, solar, wind, natural gas, hydro, et cetera, how they all work differently, how to be able to represent them uh, through uh, calculations as well. Um, but yeah, with the standard MBA, it just didn't seem as attractive to me as someone who's very passionate about the energy industry. This kind of hit all, I checked all the boxes in terms of my interest and uh, also had a lot of you know, peers and coworkers, neighbors who had also pursued the GEM program and as soon as they heard about me having any frame, any bit of interest in it, they came or swooped right in and uh, kind of helped seal the deal on that one and helped uh, you know promote the program as well. Awesome. Well, great. Well, yeah, it sounds yeah like the energy focus and some peer support. Uh, I know we're definitely big factors, but yeah, we hear that you know, from a lot of students too. How really just going, let's say, two layers deep or so versus an MBA where you know, if you know that you want to make energy your career, regardless of what sector, having everything focused on that just opens up so many more doors and so much more acumen that you can go into. So no, thank you for sharing that, Parker. And Ellen, uh, why, don't, um, why don't you don't mind answering the same question? Can you tell us why you decided to pursue the GEM program versus an MBA when you were looking at graduate school options a, a few years back? Yeah, similar to Parker, really wanting that energy focus, not just a generic MBA. And the other attractive thing is that I wanted to keep working when what one of the reasons that I was inspired to do the GEM program was it was 2016, the oil and gas downturn had just hit. I was only working and getting paid for four days of work a week. And I all of a sudden had some extra time on my hands and realized I could use that for my career. But I didn't want to quit 
a job knowing that there were a lot of other people getting laid off losing years of experience in the industry and that it was valuable for me to continue working continue those gaining those years of experience but i feel like that the the online mbas are almost a dime a dozen now there are a lot of them out there and jem gave me that opportunity to both continue to work get into a focused energy mba and also that hybrid system that glenn was talking about not just being a faceless online MBA, but actually getting to meet and work with my cohort members and meet my professors at the start of each quarter. And so getting really the best of both worlds, getting to know my classmates, getting to know my professors, but still having the flex flexibility to stay working. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and yeah, we hear that from a lot of students too, is yeah, we, you want to have the flexibility to work while still doing it, but still have a little bit of that in-person component too, right? Because we know the energy field, what's the best way to put this? It's the world's smallest large sector, right? You know, in terms of networking and everything that you know there. So yeah, well, well thank you so much for sharing that. Well, um, um, Ellen, you know, since we have you here, this next question is for both of you, but we'll, have, we'll switch it up and have you go first. Um, and I think you mentioned this a little bit too in your, in your answer just now, that, you know, we're in energy transition. And obviously, especially in Colorado, uh, where we are, there is an increasing emphasis on uh, cleaner energy, technology, regulations, you know, all those components. So uh, for those that are looking at graduate school now and in an energy field, why do you think that now is such a pivotal time for energy professionals to, to pursue higher education? Yeah, I mean, we, we are in an energy transition. If we look at Parker's old company, Excel, the idea of a the utility as being a stable entity that is always going to be the ones to supply us power, that's really getting flipped on its head right now with the more distributed generation, rooftop solar, community solar, various other um, you know transitions towards renewables, and there just really is an opportunity for all of us to increase our knowledge of these other aspects. For example, even in oil and gas, we could use solar panels to power some of our facilities out in West Texas that it's hard to get power generation to. There are just so many opportunities that as renewables and other energy sources continue to get cheaper, we can start to use those, leverage those for our more traditional types of um, power utility and, uh, and energy extraction activities. And so it's really important for us to just have a broader scope of how all these technologies work, how they can fit together and help us brainstorm. And even if you are working in a big company and if you are going to stay in your specific sector, you can do something like suggest a renewable energy project to help out your oil and gas facility or do something internally that can from your broad horizons that you learned from the GEM program really help support your company, even if it is a traditional company, move towards a more resilient energy future. Yeah, no, no, no absolutely. And I think that was really well said, Ellen. And actually, it, it's interesting. I was on LinkedIn earlier, you know, um, and I saw something actually too, even recently here in Colorado, where Bison Oil and Gas has actually partnered with Pivot Energy on a huge new solar project that's almost you know, going to be approximately 4,000 megawatts uh, of energy when it's all said and done. So we're, we're seeing more of this collaboration, but of course you can't do it unless you know how they all work together, right? And I think that's that's definitely um, one of the, the points that you were definitely highlighting there and, and so critical too in this energy transition. So, well, Parker, I see you have the same question to you um, here, you know, now that we are in this energy transition and you're here locally in Colorado as well. Um, and you, I know you, as Alan mentioned, you work for Excel Energy um, and now with a different company, but what, um, why do you think now is such an important time you know, and so pivotal just in this fork in the road, so to speak, in energy sector? Uh, well, to touch on another one of Ellen's points as well, um, how she discussed, you know, seeing all this kind of overlap between different sides of the energy spectrum or different spectrums of the energy industry. Um, having our class, like the way our classes are set up and framed, we have a lot of discussion-based pieces. Uh, so, and everyone comes from a different background. Ellen was oil and gas, I was utilities. We had people from the legal side, we had other utility folks, some people who are just joining the energy industry, uh, and then even some folks who are in nuclear as well. So like, we have perspectives from all around, but with our class material and have every, everything be energy focused, 
we're forced to constantly kind of have our finger on the pulse of what's going on in the energy industry right now. And during our discussion posts and like weekly discussions, uh, we'd all have to chime in, discuss a, a given issue that one of our professors would bring up, depending on the class. And you know, we all give our answers. We all comment on it, other people's as well. And you hear just a lot of different perspectives on the same topic. And it really broadens your horizon. And you think differently because you, I was thinking of things from a utility perspective. Then we have other people coming from the oil and gas perspective, the renewable sector perspective. Sometimes there's different perspectives between wind and solar on the same topic as well. Just really it broadens your understanding and also just how it forces you right into it. Like you can't just you know lay back in this kind of uh, program. It, you really get into it and then you have the just the all your um, peers around you as well to help kind of keep you like chugging through as well so it's uh like with all that energy transition yeah you, got, you have your finger on the pulse and you also just have many perspectives to uh better understand uh, what's going on in the field as well no absolutely and especially during those cohort weekends like you were talking about um as well you know on the park we get to go ahead and meet someone who's on the the nuclear side in Arizona, or even like right now, right now we have a couple students from Saudi Arabia and Bangladesh. So just having these different perspectives, you would never, or, or say, really get exposed to and get to really more intimately work with them. It's open to, open to a new way of thinking, right? You know, I'm approaching different problems, you know, and solutions that I know for a lot of students is really helpful. So, um, well, Alan, you actually touched on this in your, your previous answer here, um, but if you could uh, elaborate a little more, you know, because your experience is primarily in oil and gas, that let's just say hypothetically, if you decided to pursue an opportunity in another energy sector, um, can you discuss why, like, in particular, a program like GEM and how the curriculum is set up would be helpful for you to successfully make that transition from one sector to another, or maybe just even for any, any student in general who wants to transition energy fields? Yeah, so first of all, it's, it's the people. I mean, primarily with my career in oil and gas, I've uh, been in Colorado for about six and a half years now. My entire network is before GEM was built off of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, the Denver Petroleum Club, without the exposure to the other GEM students in my cohort, the students in other cohorts, the professors, I, did, I wouldn't have had much of a network outside of oil and gas. So that was re really important was, was the networking aspect, the making connections. And then also there was a, there is, um, one of my cohort members who was in oil and gas and wanted to use GEM to transition into renewables. And he did that after a few months of graduating the GEM program, he did get a job at a solar company rather than the Suncor oil and gas company where he was previously working. And during the GEM program, you have the options to do independent projects, to work on group projects. And if you're particularly interested in say solar or wind or nuclear, and it's not something that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the GEM program encourages you to choose a project where you can start diving into that and start learning more about that. And then I would say the third thing was the, as, the, the, um, the ability to use the CU Denver um, career coaches. So you're able to talk with career coaches hone in on your resume, your LinkedIn profile. If you are trying to make that transition, they can be very helpful to you so that you're reaching out to the right people, you're maybe developing the right skills. Maybe there are some online courses you could take in addition to what you're doing on GEM to give you one of those certifications that might get an employer to, from another sector to notice you. Um, so yeah, really, really a lot of different ways to transition to a different energy sector through the GEM program and the resources that the GEM program offers you. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And it's interesting that, yeah, you had yeah, a student, you know, go from oil and gas to renewables, like you mentioned. And I know that's something that we've seen a lot more of just, yeah, transitioning to different fields and that having that parallel skill set that goes, you know, from one sector, you know, to the other with that too. So, well, and actually, since you kind of touched on it a little bit, um, I'd like to go into being a little more deep on the cohort weekend. So you talked about that and some of the networking piece about it too. And then Parker, after Alan is done, I'd love to hear your take on it. What, what was it about the cohort weekend, you know, that the networking connections part, just really meeting everyone that, that helped really make the program more than, as you said, a, I don't think a faceless online program, I we visually <laughs> thinking about that, but yeah, but just, you know, that really just helped it, help separate it. Can you talk a little more about your experience during the cohort weekend, some of the relationships too, that, that you're able to go through that? 
Yeah. So, um, you know, going into this, knowing that I wanted to pursue grad school, knowing that I wanted something like an MBA, I figured I would probably learn something about leadership, something about accounting, something about finance. But the part that I didn't realize was the value of the network, the value of getting to know my professors and learning from them as and their experiences, as well as my classmates' experiences. The networking is a very important piece of it, and it is what you make it. You can either choose to go to all the networking events, you can choose to access those executive in residence, which I don't know why you wouldn't, because that gives you an hour of time with a current executive or previous energy executive that can just give you any sort of advice that, that you would want want to ask them. How often do you get an hour of an executive's time? So there, there were a lot of aspects that I didn't even predict going into a, a program like this. And uh, the networking piece is, is, is certainly important and, and it's important to stay connected with those networks as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up too, Ellen. Um, before we go um, to hear your comments on this, Parker. But yeah, I think that's an interesting point is that, you know, we're all busy, right? But especially, you know, like, like anything else, the higher you up, the higher you're up in a company, the more executive presence, the level that you have, the more valuable essentially your time is, the more, you know, constrained it can be too. So really just to have that uninterrupted time for half an hour to an hour. I even had a student that I had to stop here that was talking to someone for like an hour and 15 minutes because they just kind of, you know, got lost in conversation in a very positive way, but it's rare to have that uninterrupted time. You know, for that to really pick their brain, add that to your network too for value. So, well, Parker, he's going on that too. If you could uh, chime in on some of the really the biggest takeaways or value that you saw from those cohort weekends, some of the networking of it, and just how how that really built um, a good foundation for you with the program. Thanks, Glenn. I mean, yeah, Ellen touched on a lot of it already, but at the same time, you know, you're if you're just doing a strictly online program, you know, you'll interact with people via Zoom or you know, some sort of Zoom analog, maybe discussion posts, but you may not really know your classmates that well. You may not be able to develop that similar, that same network. Uh, so the GEM Cohort Weekend was a great opportunity to, you know, meet your classmates face-to-face, -face, get to know them, uh, and then as well as, you know, other things like, you know, your executives in the residence, you are literally talking to people who are basically at the top of their class uh, for their companies, for their industries, and you're hearing perspectives from people who have seen, you know, let's say, you know, three to four decades that in, in some cases of this energy uh, industry, some of the ebbs and flows, seeing patterns that, you know, people like us who may not have that same level of experience or those, that many years of experience, we just won't see those patterns the same way and kind of understanding from a different perspective of what these folks have seen. Uh, but also then you have, you know, other pieces like, you know, your gem happy hours where, you're going out, you're meeting your, your fellow classmates, you're meeting classmates in other cohorts and classes as well, uh, you know, developing better connections and networking that way, but also your professors and getting a better opportunity to, to meet them, know them, and, you know, it makes situations like, you know, office hours and just personal, like, individual one-on-ones with your professors is that much more of a comfortable, fluid experience rather than kind of feeling like you're, I don't know how else to describe, almost like talking to a doctor kind of thing, that level of comfort where, you know, with the professors, you already have some rapport with them. And it's a much, in my opinion, a much better experience. And then with the cohort weekends, even with people I don't, didn't have class with, there's still people I just keep in contact with, both as professional contacts, as well as uh, good friends as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and nothing against the medical profession, but we don't want to view this as a <laughs> long checkup, right? <laughs> so, no, no, absolutely. I think, think that's, uh, that's a great point, Parker. And, and actually, you brought up something else that's interesting, too, that when you actually, just to kind of paint a picture for all our stu um, everyone listening here, is that when you are in those cohort weekends, it's actually not just your cohort, but there's two others that are there simultaneously as well. So with what Parker was mentioning with going to uh, Colorado Rockies, you know, baseball game or, you know, a different social event or happy hour that we have, it really gives you a chance to expand your network too, even outside of, of your specific cohort, which I know is really valuable for a lot of our students too. And um, as I did mention earlier, we have, you know, um, a second poll question just to kind of gauge the temperature check of, of the audience here. So we'd love to go ahead and get your feedback um, on our second one right here, which has to do with really what ideally you're looking to go ahead and get out of the 
the GEM program, so, or really just any graduate school program in general, too. So if you don't mind, I want the audience to take a, a couple seconds here to um, go ahead and, uh, and click on which one you think would apply most to yourself, and then you know, we'll try to go ahead and make sure that some of this is addressed in the eight questions and answers that we follow up with here shortly. All right, we'll give about 10 more seconds here uh, for everyone to do that. All right. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, and it looks like, yeah, we actually got a pretty um, interesting array there, too, with uh, those that are interested in learning about um, different energy sectors to potentially transition in, along with the finance, technical, and regulatory skills, and, and really just job outlook and career advancement, too, uh, that we hear a lot. So thank you, everyone, for your participation there. All right, now to, I'll get into actually the, the next question that we have here. Um, Ellen, this will, this will be um, for you and Parker, but we'll have you go first. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in graduate school or even the STEM program specifically, but kind of hesitant to take that leap to graduate school? Yeah, so I still remember what Sarah Durdowski, who's now the, um, the director of GEM at the time she was, uh, it, at the time she was not the director, but she, she was still working at the GEM program. I still remember what she said to me when I was expressing hesitation about whether or not I wanted to pull the trigger and apply. She said, Ellen, it's just 18 months. And it really felt like that. It did feel like, yes, I worked very hard and had a big time commitment for 18 months, but it was over fairly quickly and now I am rewarded with these skills and these connections and a lot of learnings that I'm able to take and, and apply to new opportunities in the energy industry. So um, it may sound really intimidating and I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that it's not challenging to balance that and, and a job. Um, I would say that one, one option you could look into is not doing the cohort style, trying to just do one or two classes at a time if you maybe have a family and a strenuous job and maybe a lot of travel associated with your job. Maybe doing two classes each quarter is too much for you, and that's okay. There are plenty of GEM graduates who take a slower path that isn't over in 18 months, but it means you're not working quite as hard each uh, quarter. So there are options for the admissions group to work with you and figure out what is best for you. But it also, it does go by quickly when you just go ahead and knock it all out with the cohort. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and yeah, what Alan mentioned too as well with um, the 18 months and how that's set up, just a kind of a recap for everyone here. We have during our cohort weekends, which are January, April, July, and October, the first four days that weekend, that Friday through Monday, you would come here for those cohort weekends, and typically students will do two classes at a time. Um, now, we encourage you know, most to go to the beach, start off that way, but as Ellen mentioned, you know, everyone's situation is a little different. Um, most of our students are, I just about all of them are working full time, a lot of them have family, so unexpected things happen, right? So just communicate with whether it's uh, myself, Michelle is wonderful as a student affairs manager here, anyone um, on the GEM team to go ahead and help with your situation. We'll try to go ahead and figure out the best path for you know that'll be for you there. And, um, and I think as well, too, one of the important thing to mention is that, yeah, absolutely, it's, it's not a walk in the park, you know, but also I think whether it's, you know, raising kids, running, you know, a marathon, or just any kind of challenge that you do that has a, a great reward at the end, that if it wasn't, you know, worth the journey, then it probably wasn't worth, you know, the, the result that you were seeking at the end of too. So it definitely is very doable, actually, over 80% of our students who start the program finish it, but, but yeah, there is a lot of, you know, time management, getting back in the school, load of things that, that we help out with, but, uh, but no, it definitely is a, yeah, a little bit of a sacrifice that way, too, where your Netflix account, you may want to pause for a little bit <laughs> or something like that. So, well, Parker, um, along those lines, too, as well, you know, and maybe if you want to recall back to when you were looking at the GEM program or just graduate school in general, what advice would you give to someone who's, who's interested in going back but still kind of hesitant to, to kind of go out and take that leap? I'd definitely reach out to folks. Uh, I think my first foray into looking at the GEM program. I went to the website and they had a little column where you could put in some information, have someone reach out to you. And so uh, Glenn's predecessor, Nathan, had reached out to me and uh, we started chit chatting about the program and I was still kind of on the fence about it. Like, I'll just get back to you in a little bit about it. Uh, but it still gave me a much deeper understanding of what the program is than what you see on paper on the website. Uh, so that definitely kind of filled in a lot of blanks in my understanding and kind of lowered my trepidations about it. Um, 
but you know, it's again, like I said, it's no walk in the park, but at the same time, you can do it, <laughs> I had to say. Uh, I had some classmates who, you know, they're parents of three kids, they're working full time, and they are chugging along just like me, who is, you know, single, just had a job and, that was, and a dog, and that was pretty much the extent of my responsibilities. So like any walk of life can really do it. It's all about, you know, what kind of effort you want to put into it. However, I will say, if there is any hesitation about what you are really getting into with the GEM program, um, there's a great class um, taught by uh, actually Professor Mike Orlando, uh, offered for free on Coursera.com. I think it's Fundamentals of the Global Energy Industry. And that was one of the last things I did before I was ready to apply to this program. It just, you know, audited this brief program, this uh, course, got a good, got my feet dipped in the water a little bit of what I can expect from the curriculum. And from then I was, I was hooked, I was ready to go uh, right from there. So I'd highly recommend that if you really want to get a more in-depth or, yeah, I'd say more in-depth view of what you can expect from your classes and what uh, your classes will expect from you as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up as well, Parker. And for anyone who's attending here live today or, will, or that will ultimately listen to the recording of this too, I'd be happy to send you the link for that. What he was referring to are one of two uh, free Coursera classes. They're almost like mini five-week modules that are self-paced and are taught by Dr. Orlando and um, Melissa Wood, two of our faculty members here. But it's a nice way to dip your feet in, understand a little more about the energy field. And they're not quite as advanced as our classes here um, and the production, everything of them too. But it's a good way to um, start, you know, taking baby steps, so to speak, and I'll brush up on energy knowledge too. So anyone that's interested can email me and I'd be happy to connect with you on, on that class or um, on the, that free course or the one that Melissa Wood offers here. And, um, and I want you to, uh, another point here, actually Parker, since we have you right here, I know you made a transition from Excel Energy to um, your current position uh, right now as a consultant. So can you talk a little bit about specifically with the STEM curriculum, like what, what, what components of it were helpful with your previous job at Excel and even with your current one right now, which delves into a lot of energy sectors, I think even nuclear a little bit too, if I'm not mistaken, and just how you're able to actually really apply that. I mean, I'd say just about every class I was able to apply, like go home from work, watch uh, the weekly, um, what's the word, the week, weekly lectures, and I uh, probably I'd learned something new that I could literally apply to my job the next day, whether it's, you know, just understanding, you know, 20th century, 21st century energy issues and realities, which is, I like to refer to that as the Energy 101 course offered in the program. I was able to rapidly advance my understanding of different generation technologies, different fuels, and how they really work in the energy mix. And then with my job at Excel, which was primarily energy efficiency on a commercial construction level, uh, understanding how power market dynamics work and also you know how to you know balance systems uh, I remember our I think one of the first uh, second classes offered was energy economics and that class lit every single day I could apply something new to my job and just become a stronger employee for Excel at the time uh, but now with my new job at Phil Singer Energy Partners uh, being a consultant and analyst for you know power markets and uh, raising and simulating uh, different generation assets, uh, primarily nuclear right now uh, and natural gas. I think I use every single, uh, like skills from every single class offered in the core curriculum, with the exception of some of the HR classes, just because I'm more of an individual contributor now rather than uh, in the, that kind of management piece. Um, but literally every technical skill, every kind of softer, I, background fund, uh, foundational understanding piece. Uh, it's, I use literally every single one of those, uh, something from every single class every day, which it's, it's kind of a dream come true to be honest, because I, I love the curriculum that I, I did at, at, throughout the GEM program. And then, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to, you know, leave my old um, role was that I just wasn't, didn't have the opportunity to apply as much. And uh, then given this opportunity, I never looking back at, at uh, being able to apply this stuff. And then additionally, I don't think anyone's ever said I regret going to grad school. So. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And, and actually, too, just since you uh, mentioned that a little bit as well, Parker, with uh, some of just the different skill sets and the different components that you learn of other energy fields, I'm curious, were, were you given any specific feedback, whether it was from Excel or, or maybe a manager or a hiring manager at your current position about how a program like GEM 
help them, you know, say, hey, you know, I think you'd be the right fit for this, or led to a conversation that that helped you, I guess, you know, secure that position or give them the confidence that you can make that transition from one sector to another. So you had a couple different uh, instances of that. Um, I had a couple of recruiters as soon as I graduated reached out to me from the wind sector, uh, wanting to work a very different type of role and like managing transportation of wind components uh, around the world. Uh, so it was kind of more of a logistics side of things, but having that gem program uh, under my belt, you know, it definitely makes you stick out a lot more than just a standard MBA. Uh, but then with this pro, with my current role, I kind of reached out to them, found out about it, got a little bit more involved with them. And then after I, they were kind of interested more about the GEM program itself, and they asked to, for me to send over my core curriculum, just like the list of classes and a brief description of each one. And, you know, within like days, I got a re response back saying, yeah, we want you to come up, come out here and check this out, or at least, you know, join our side. Um, but you know, I've had friends, actually I've had a couple colleagues, one guy from the cohort after mine, he was a landman in oil and gas. Uh, and then throughout, during the program, he transitioned to be a landman for a wind company out in Utah as well. So people can you know, make those leaps as well. Uh, we've had some folks go from oil and gas, some other oil and gas stuff to renewables and vice versa. Because again, there's a lot of inner uh, applicability there. As Ellen mentioned, like, you know, applying solar technology is to help power certain pieces of the uh, oil and gas industry vertical as well. Uh, there's a lot of different weird overlaps that you may not even be aware of while you're in the program itself. But then, you know, as you continue, you know, building on that knowledge and skill set gained from the program, the core curriculum, as well as the electives, you see like, oh, well, here's a great way to apply this or here's a great way to apply that. Uh, during my time at Excel, uh, kind of learning about more different technologies and different other pieces of the energy industry got me put on a bunch of different uh, specialty like uh, cross-functional teams because I kind of had that dare I say edge but uh, another piece that uh, didn't quite um, I had some other skills that a lot of my peers just didn't have as a result and they were quite sought after and even got like a lot of recognition from our vice president as soon as he found out that I was doing this program and doing it on my own too not like you know pushed by the company to take it. No, no, absolutely. That's really great feedback, Parker. And I think it's something that's interesting that you mentioned too, as well. And I, I kind of briefly remember us having a conversation, maybe it was a happy hour, something a, a few months back about this, that you were able to, um, you know, once you were there and they found out that, oh, it's like, oh, you're able to go ahead and apply, you know, calculations, you know, of, of different, you know, wind panels to, you know, fluid dynamics and more some more technical components to at least the basics of it to go ahead and help you be more diverse on all these different projects too. So, you know, in addition to like those who, you know, we have transitioned, you know, from oil and gas to wind, you know, or something like that. So, you no, know, that's a that's a really interesting feature. Thank you for your feedback. All right, we're gonna have one more question here, then we'll uh, dive into uh, the end portion here. Maybe a few minutes for Q and A um, for both our panelists here as well. So, um, for um, this question is for you, Alan, and it has to deal with the faculty. Of course, you love, right? <laughs> uh, they're great. So, I guess can you say, was there a particular um, class or a faculty member or two that really stood out to you and because overall, what was your impression of the gym faculty kind of reflecting back on your experience? Well, I'll answer the second part first and say that overall, the gym faculty are all very impressive. They have a lot of experience either in the industry or studying and researching aspects that support the industry. That was honestly one of my biggest frustrations with my undergraduate education in mechanical engineering most of my actually all of my professors were very in tune with academia but very disconnected from any sort of industry and that that frustrated me because i knew i wanted to go into the industry see how engineering worked in the real world and, and didn't just want to stay in academia so first of all you know they're they all have great experience in the energy industry and in various facets but i'll say that accounting with Gary Hapkin, who spent a lot of his career in various financial roles, mostly with Oxy, uh, Occidental Petroleum, all over the world. He has some great experiences about, uh, great stories about living in places like Oman and Colombia. And he just taught us accounting in such a pragmatic way to say, 
hey, I'm not teaching you to be accountants. I know that none of you are going to be accountants besides the one guy who actually was an accountant in our class. Um, but he wanted to teach us in a way that we would be able to understand the balance sheet when it got presented to us when we are in the, those higher levels or in those managerial levels where we're reviewing those types of things from our subordinates. So um, yeah, who knew that you could enjoy accounting as much as I did from someone with a lot of experience in oil and gas accounting. Yeah, and there's always, every class always has an accountant, you know, we all need one, so nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but uh, no, no, that, that, that's uh, that's great to hear. And, and yeah, and I think too as well, that illustrates a really good point where um, for lack of better phrase, almost no one knows just enough to be dangerous, so to speak, in a positive way, you know, right? Where you're not, we're not going to try to teach you to be an accountant here, but understand if you are, you know, pitching a proposal to you know, the CFO of your company and the senior VP there on a project to understand how all the different components and project models work together so you can intelligently collaborate and project it, right? And I think that's really, it sounds like that the point that you were getting at, well, which is uh, which is great. But thank you so much for, for sharing that. So um, for, um, for, the next portion of, of the webinar here, I'd like to quickly go into, I'll quickly go into, let's see right here, uh, slides sometimes cooperate, sometimes don't, there we go, <laughs> but that, but um, there's a couple of next steps and a couple other important points here. Uh, so for those of you that are interested in applying to the program, as um, Parker and Ellen mentioned, it's not a very difficult process. And um, actually one of the things I want to point out too is that it's a lot different than than applying your bachelor's degree where I know for me personally I had to mail an application packet wait three to four months and then created the application gods that I would get a big letter versus a tiny envelope right how much fun that was so definitely not the case it's a much more streamlined process we usually um, have students finish their application file in a matter of weeks like two to three weeks or so and get decisions back within a week or two after that so just even as an example of how quick the turnaround is for our upcoming class that's on January 17th here, we'll be working with students right until before the new year. That's how quickly you can turn around. So um, right there is a link if you want to get started with that. And then the next step would be just contact me and we could schedule a quick conversation to go over uh, the next steps in a few in a little, in more detail so I can help guide you through that. And for those also that are that will apply to the program the next couple weeks here by November 20th, we are waiving that $50 application fee as well um, there too. So. In addition uh, to that here, we also wanted to go ahead and sorry, you want to say, yeah, um, have a Q&A along with the GEM giveaway because who doesn't like a good rhyme, right? <laughs> so um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar here for all live webcast attendees, um, to enter for the chance to win your uh, first, uh, for your first two class or your classes or your first term of textbooks, you know, on GEM, just go ahead and email me there at glenn.engelberg at ucdenver.edu. Just with a quick sentence saying, hey, here's my official entry, Glenn. Hopefully look forward to hearing with good news. And if you send that to me by this coming Sunday the 10th, I will go ahead and contact the winner by Monday, November 11th. On Veterans Day, actually, uh, with a quick update. So, well, I wanted to thank everyone again for uh, coming here today. Um, before we go, we do actually have a couple questions from the audience. It should only take a, a couple minutes or so with a little bit of a Q&A. Um, but... If you do have any questions on the program, want to schedule time to discuss it further, uh, there is my contact information, and I work with all prospective students or those just kind of, you know, thinking about um, evaluating this versus different options to see what the best fit is for you. So uh, please don't hesitate to ever reach out. All right, so we actually, as I mentioned, do have a couple questions here uh, from, from the audience. And uh, the first one, why don't we go ahead and start with, um, with you, Alan, if you don't mind. Um, one, of students wants to know, uh, one of the um, attendees wants to know a little more about kind of the capstone project or the final one that we had. Uh, can you go ahead and discuss, I guess, a little more about what that was like and how it was a little different than, like, let's say, a 300-page thesis? I know some master's programs have. Yeah, so I think the biggest takeaway from the capstone project is I've already alluded to the fact that this program is meant to help you in your job. It's supposed to be similar to industry, unlike when you're in undergraduate or maybe some grad schools where it's very important that each person contributes equally to a project. The beauty of your capstone project is that you decide and you know how that works on industry teams as well. You always have at least in the energy industry, we tend to have multidisciplinary teams all working on the same goal because we have such large capitally intensive projects that need various 
levels of expertise from the, for example, in oil and gas, we need to have geoscientists and engineers um, all working together. So being able to delegate to your teammates' strengths and being able to rely upon your teammates' strengths and their different experiences makes it so much more enjoyable than just doing a project just to do the project and just to write the paper and hit that page limit and make the presentation and make it as long as it's supposed to be. Really getting to say, hey, I'm the one who likes writing. Can I write the paper? You're the one who does great research. Can you give me your notes and, and tell me about all the research that you do? And then you're the guy who loves putting together the PowerPoint and creating a really exciting video where you'll have various things pop in and out of, uh, of the video to, to, to make it different from everyone else's, then that's your skill. You know, it's just being able to work with your teammates as if you're working on a real work project, delegating the skills that need to be delegating is, is really rewarding. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think that that's a great answer, not just on, you know, what your final project was like and the flexibility to make sure something that's not just applicable, but that you really get to be in charge of, but also some of the group project stuff as well. So actually one of the questions was oriented towards this um, to Parker, and I'd love to get your feedback on it. Um, you know, I know, well, let's be honest, you know, when some people hear the word group projects, um, they think of, you know, like the dentist, they can cringe, you know, because we've all had those experiences, right, you know, where someone gets stuck doing the entire thing or, you know, they, you know, it just doesn't work out. Um, but I know, as Ellen mentioned, that team dynamics are such a critical part of the energy field with all of the different elements and complications and intricacies that are involved. I guess, Parker, can you talk a little bit about what your experience was like um, with doing group projects, whether that was during the cohort weekend or even online, and how, how Jim was able to help facilitate that? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, so as Ellen uh, alluded to earlier, that uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, different types of cross-functional skill sets uh, within your groups, whether you're, you know, assigned into groups by your professors or the program, or you choose your groups yourself. We always had a pretty diverse skill set. You know, some folks are more, more better, like, a little bit better with the finance and, you know, reading uh, financial statements. And then also working in Excel, some other folks who have come from more of an engineering background. Um, and there's other, you know, everyone kind of has their own, they, everyone brings something to the table. Uh, and so one thing I've found is, you know, undergrad group projects, we're like, okay, here we go, we're gonna do <laughs> one else's work for them. But the way these projects tend to be structured is you can't really do that. They kind of require you to have, you know, bring in all these different skill sets. And so, you know, everyone has to contribute. And it actually worked out pretty well, I'd say. Um, you know, sometimes it can be difficult, you know, given the global uh, dimension of the program and trying to make time. You know, we had some classmates who were, you know, drilling in Saudi Arabia. And so they had, a, you know, a very kind of tight window of what you, when they could like sign into Zoom and could all like, Kind of contribute and talk about where we are in the project but you know with that we still had we're able to you know make time for it's just like anything you you figure it out and um yeah it was actually it's probably like one of the better group uh, assignment kind of opportunities i've ever had uh even better than some of the ones i had at my at my employer at the time uh just a really great structure and being able to you know delegate everyone's skill sets and like certain things. I remember our technical aspects of energy science. I keep going back to that class because it was just so cool. <laughs> um every week, every like large assignment we'd have, uh, we were forced to switch roles of uh, different things that we're working on, whether we're doing the uh, simple thermodynamic calculations for a given technology, the carbon reduction calculations, uh, the drawing the uh, life cycle or yeah, life cycle analysis or life cycle cost analysis for the plant and understanding, you know, the interactions between mass, energy, and emissions as well. Uh, so, yeah, it was just, it always kind of almost forced you into this well-rounded positioning. And that in some t situations, you know, we might have had a, you know, a, a deficit of those skills and there is a great opportunity to learn a skill set or you know just some kind of discipline that you may not have otherwise ever learned. No, no, absolutely, and I think that's a that's a really great way to put it too. And uh, Dr. Hussein's um, man's class, you're talking about technical aspects of energy science. It's a good is a good summary of a lot of the different energy fields, especially all working together. And I know they even do some international examples like the Gurry Dam in Venezuela, I believe, and you know a couple others that are 
that are really dynamic and help you know kind of open your eyes to a lot of different other ways that the energy field comes together. Well, on that note, I respect everyone's time. We're going to end the webinar right here, but I just want to thank you again to our guests, Parker Cohn and Ellen Scott, for not just your contributions as a GEM student, but of course here today. And for anyone else that is listening right now or uh, eventually on the recording here too, if you have any questions on the program, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I know I had that information on the previous slide here, and I'd be happy to connect with you to discuss the program further or even to as well, depending on their schedule and time. I know we have a lot of um, a very gracious alumni faculty that even you know, will go ahead and connect with students on a, on a kind of case-by-case -case basis too, if you wanted to see what that experience is like or even come to one of the local events that we have. But regardless of that, connect with me first and I'll happy to be a liaison for that. And thank you so much to everyone for coming today. And I hope everyone else enjoys the rest of their Thursday and has a wonderful rest of their week as well. All right, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.